Well, Yahweh bless you. Thank you for joining our fellowship today. And so we're going to go right off and hear from our Heavenly Father according to 1 Corinthians 14, tongues with interpretation and prophecy. So anybody who feels inspired to speak in tongues and interpret and prophesy, go ahead. My children, never be afraid to ask. If you want something, ask me. Because I can give you anything. Like, sometimes if you want something and you don't ask, it's like, not think I can do it. My children, I can give you anything as long as you use it justly. I can do anything. I created this whole earth and you. I can do anything for you as long as you use it justly. So you must, but you must ask. My children, if you are afraid of things, of dark and spiders, don't be afraid, my children. For I am here, you are never alone. I am always right next to you. You might not see me, you might not hear me, but I am always right next to you. So don't be scared to know that I am right next to you. <laughs> Listen in your heart. It may seem like small, itty bitty things, like say every morning you go you go to this one coffee shop and get a coffee, and I I want you to go to another shop. It may seem weird and out of the ordinary, but listen to that because there could be someone there that needs your help. For when you think you're broke, you're not broken because I'm with you. I stand with you even when you feel alone, no matter what. I have your back. My, son, my sons and daughters, uh, call upon me and know that, that I am there and that, that I am a great rescuer. Uh, so as, as, you see, as you see opportunities or if you see something that is encroaching upon you that looks uh, unfathomable, know that I am there and, and my power reaches far and wide and it is an honor for me to, to exercise, to stretch out my arm to relieve and to bring glory uh, to my children and to, to show the world who I am. And so know that as you go out that I, that I call upon you for these are great acts of faith that I'm calling upon you to, to, to seek and know that these things are available for what the word will, world will tell you is not what I am telling you. I have given you everything that you need unto life and godliness in this time. I have given it to you. Utilize it, my children. And please, I'm calling you, I'm begging you to speak my word. Do not hold back. Hold it forth with a force, with force. For the times are difficult. The times are difficult, but you have an armor to put on. You have a God that loves you. You have my word that will protect you. So walk forth and know that while you're in the midst of this battle, don't be ashamed of me and my words. Speak it. I'll give a prophecy. <clears throat> for I've put you on this earth to produce obedience and faith for me in order that we can have a relationship. And that your life is your life is such a short one. Um, but what I ask you to do in this life is, is preparation for the next life. It's almost like a, a father and a mother I'm <clears throat> telling a child to pack their bags, get, get, get your bags packed and clean your room and, and, and go to bed early uh, because there's preparation for something else and even better. For this life is, is a time for you to be sowing in faith. Um, and don't worry about when the seeds come up because if you're obedient according to my words and according to the Ruach Kadesh, well then you have sown wonderfully and you can expect, expect great harvests because this is all preparatory to the new heaven and new earth that's coming. Father, we thank you for these words through our Lord and Savior, Mashiach Yahushua. Amen. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to do a sharing on a love story between Yahweh and Solomon. So we'll begin in 
Second Samuel chapter seven, page three twenty-seven. Our Bible daughter. I'm good. I don't have my reading glasses. Okay. Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter seven, verses one through three. Amazing. We were right there. Yes, there. Yeah. That's right. Good job, Esther. And it came to pass when the king had taken up his abode in his house and Yahweh had given him rest round about from all his enemies that the king said unto Nathan the prophet see I pray thee I have my abode in a house of cedar but the ark of Elohim abideth in the midst of curtains and Nathan said unto, uh, unto the king all that is in thy heart, go, do, for Yahweh is with thee. It is very important, too, is we've got to remember David was a prophet, and he had Holy Spirit, but we have to surround ourselves with people who hear and walk with Yahweh so we can get words that we otherwise wouldn't receive. Now we go to uh, verse 12 and 17, and we know what happened, and we're going to see about that, but... And it, shall be, uh, and it shall be that when thy day shall be fulfilled, and so Yahweh is saying, you're not going to build it, you're not going to build a temple. <clears throat> but it shall be when thy day shall be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, then will I raise up thy seed after thee, which proceedeth from my own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish his kingly throne unto time's age abiding. I will become his father, and he shall become, and he shall become my son. So this sounds a lot like Christ, also. So we're going to see that Solomon relationship in Yahweh is really the foreshadowing of Christ in Yahweh. And if he commit iniquity, then will I correct him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the son of men. But my hesed shall not depart from him, as I cause it to depart from Saul whom I caused to depart from before thee. So shall thy house and thy kingdom be made steadfast unto time's age abiding before thee. Thy throne shall be established unto time's age abiding. And we keep seeing that time's age abiding for the throne. Did you want to sit up here? Isaiah, come on and sit on the couch. Sure, okay. Yeah. Either one. You have to say, well, that just can't be. That's forever. Well, with Christ it is. According to all these words and according to all these visions, so spake Nathan unto David. So that kind of begins the story of, of Sam, or Solomon. Now we go to 2 Samuel 12. And we'll see Solomon come into the picture. He's talking about a future son that he hadn't had. He's going to build a temple. And we're going to see also the temple is foundational to all the word of Yahweh. From Moses to, you know, uh, Solomon and David, to uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, to uh, uh, the destruction of the temple in Yahushua's time, to the new foreshadowing of the temple being built by Yahushua. That represents worship? Well, the center of it is Yahweh. Man, you're looking at that, so there's such a connection here that keeps coming back and forth, and so a lot of times we just got to be able to see and pay attention. So, uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 24 and 25. And David consoled Bathsheba, his wife, after their son died, and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son and called his name Solomon. And Yahweh did what? I think uh, that's a very, very unusual phrase, isn't it? And where else in the Word does it say, here's a person just born, and it says that Yahweh loved him, ahabbed him. And he, and he sent by the name of Nathan, the prophet, so he sent a prophet with a message about this child who was just born. Well, that's like Christ, isn't it? You know, Christ had a big fanfare when he got born. And called his name Yadiah. Beloved of Yah, for Yahweh's sake. And so what a, what a uh, display of a, of a coming king that's coming in. And we go to 1 Chronicles, chapter 22, that's page 430. Tell you a little bit more about him. 
And so we're going to be going back and forth because it's important that Yahweh, to a lot of people surprise, doesn't tell the story in one book. You have to go look for it. And that's why we have three Gospels. And, and people make mistakes because they read one Gospel and, and never reconcile with the other Gospels. So 1 Chronicles 22, verse 1. There. Oh, then second Chronicles. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Then said David, This is the house of Yahweh Elohim. Right, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the altar of a sinning sacrifice for Israel. So we're talking about the altar now. When they're about ready to start building that, now we go to 7 through 10. That's the context. And David said to Solomon and his son, As for me, it was near my heart to build a house for the name of Yahweh my Elohim. But the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, and this is a uh, good illustration, when people say a Holy Spirit came saying, you know, it's the word of Yahweh came saying all the time, but where, how did it really come? Through who? Prophets. Yeah, who was that? <coughs> Nathan. And so Yahweh spoke to Nathan, which spoke to David, and it's called, in one place, Nathan's telling him what Yahweh says, and in another place it says the word Yahweh came saying. So people have such a difficult thing with the Holy Spirit said. Well, no, this, this is, this is think, real common in Hebrew. You know, obviously a word, that's a figure of speech, it's not literal, that there's a, an element called the word of Yahweh <clears throat> coming around with... Uh, uh, identity. Uh, but the wor word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Blood in abundance has thou shed. Now remember, connect this with David, David. He had to shed a lot of blood. And, and, so to, and we're going to see Christ also is going to go through a very tough time to start his ministry. And great war has thou made. Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because much blood has I shed upon the earth before me. Lo, a son born to thee, he shall be a man of rest. And that's what Solomon means, peace. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. So Solomon shall be his name. And so who named Solomon? Yeah. Yahweh did. And also he gave him two names. And Jedediah. Yedadiah, which means beloved of Yah, and peace and quietness will I bestow upon Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father. Where else does it say that? Mm -hmm. you know, of any other kings or anything like that? Yahushua. This is Yahushua again. Therefore I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel unto times age abiding. And that's going to be obviously on the new earth. Now we go to 1 Kings chapter 3, and here is Solomon's existence on page 353. And would you mind telling me again what that was? 1 Kings 3 3. Okay. And this is great also. Solomon loved Yahweh by walking in the statues of David his father, save only that in the high place he himself was sacrificing and offering incense. So Yahweh loves Solomon at birth, and Solomon loves Yahweh. And how do I know if Elijah loves Yahweh? How do I know that, Esther? Um, I'll read this verse. Go ahead and read the verse for me again. Okay. Solomon loved Yahweh by walking in the statues of David his what? father. What did he do? By statutes. walking. Statutes are like the words. The, the rules. The rules. By walking in the statutes of David his father. So how do we know if somebody loves somebody? Walking they do what they say. I mean, they do what they're supposed to do. And so if you love Yahweh, you're going to obey them. If you love your mother, you're going to do what? Obey her. Obey. If you disobey her, are you loving her? Nope. No. So Solomon is doing that by walking in love. Now we go to chapter 4, verse 29. And okay, <coughs> Melania, 29 to 33. <coughs> All righty. And 
Yeah, we did. Was now, wait a minute. You had this wrong. And we'll do this again. If you, let me ask with all the kids. If you're not sure, just read what it says. In the Old Testament, it's we like, have the word Yahweh. So we don't have to put the word Yahweh anywhere. Because oh. where it is, it's there. If it's G-O-D, it's small, it's Elohim. It's not Yahweh. Now in the New Testament, is Yahweh written anywhere? No. no. So when it says G-O-D, if it's t talking about Yahweh, or if it's talking about what he is, he is an Elohim, but Yahweh is my Elohim. And so to be, God is my God, and how we would say that. So this is Elohim. Oh. But I tell you for the kids, if you're not sure, if you forget, just say what's written. All right. Let's start off at 29. And Elohim gave wisdom unto Solomon, and discernment, and very great largeness of heart, like the sand that is on the short sea, so that the wisdom of Solomon excelled the wisdom of all the sons of the east and all the wisdom of the Egyptians, so that he was wiser than any man, than Ethan the Eselite, and Heman the Kakol, and Dar the sons of Maho. And it came to pass that his name was throughout all the nations round about. And he spake 3,000 proverbs. And it came to pass that his songs were a thousand and five, and he discoursed of trees from the cedar that is in Lebanon, even unto hyssop that springeth out of the wall, and he discoursed the beasts and the birds and the creeping things and the fishes. That's it. Think of that. I mean, this guy was brilliant. Brilliant. Yahweh yeah, made him brilliant. That's what Christ is going to be also. So keep reflecting back on Christ. What's the discoursed? This course is, is, is conversation. Okay. Well, it's to speak. And so when we have a conversation, it's this course. Okay. Of the beast <laughs> and the bird. Yeah. Okay. And now we go to First Chronicles 29, page 436. So we're really seeing something going on with Solomon that didn't happen with anybody else. 29, verse 23 to 25. <coughs> okay, uh, Isaiah, you want to read 23 to 25? Yep. I'm going to start this the first sentence and you carry it on. This is, very, this is nowhere else either. So Solomon took his seat upon the throne of David. No. Uh -huh. What's it say? Yahweh. 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 Well, it doesn't say, doesn't say that any place. But any other king, and carry on after that. Instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel hearkened unto him, and all the rulers and the heroes, yea, moreover, all the son of King David gave a hand unto Solomon the king, and Yahweh magnified Sodom exceedingly before the eyes of all Israel, and gave him a royal majesty, had not been any, any king before him over Israel. That's, that's, that's we'll stop right there. That's that's a lot. Now we go to Second Chronicles chapter nine, verse twenty-two. Okay, Elijah, you want to do twenty-two and twenty-three? <coughs> and so, and so King Solomon became greater than all the kings of the earth, as to riches and wisdom. And all the kings of the earth were seeking the face of Solomon to hear his wisdom, which Elohim had put in his heart. And, uh, yeah, just and they, no, no, that's all. 23. Do 29 to 31 now. Okay. <clears throat> now the rest of the Acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the records of Nathan the prophet and in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shalonite and in the, and in the visions of Ido the seer concerning Jeroboam son of Nebat and Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel forty years and Solomon slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David the city of David his father and Rehoboam his son reigned in his steed and you say okay the end what a great story huh mm. well that, that's how it was portrayed I mean here was from birth to the end he was fabulous 
But that's not the end, is it? No. no. And so in life, things don't happen that way. In, in our life. And so what we've got to realize, things that were left out was, and this is called the rest of the story. Paul Harvey's is the, mm -hmm. the rest of the story. Uh, David had, his father had Uriah murdered, and that's where actually he, uh, his mother was Bathsheba, right? Mm -hmm. And that was Uriah's wife. And that's not very good, but that should just astound us. That's why the first child was Yeah, killed. died. So actually when David killed Uriah and his first child, David said. But then you're saying, what is that lesson that he made Solomon the son of David and to be king and be the example of Christ? Well, what forgiveness? You know, what we're looking at, you know, he could have picked up another son someplace else. He had a lot of wives. But the one you committed adultery with is actually the heir? Fabulous. You know, what, what kind of message is that? But then we see in David's life, which is a great person, Yahweh says the only thing that David did wrong was have Uriah killed. But he did all my will. So here was David. So in, in my estimation, David's 40 years, Solomon's 40 years, that's the Christ. So Christ had a fight while he was here on earth. When he comes back, he's going to have to fight. But then when the new kingdom comes, he's, he's going to have peace for a thousand years. So on his earthly ministry, he's like David fighting. Yeah. And then... Thousand years and even in the book of Solomon. Revelation, he's going to be fighting. He's going to be killing half the population. I mean, that's blood. And then you're, and so this, these are all signals for Yahushua as he's reading the scriptures of what he's going to have. Because otherwise, you know, as we know, uh, it appears that Yahweh set up Solomon to fail. Because he gave him so much wealth and so much glander and everything else. And he would say, well, what are you doing? You're going to kill this kid by, by doing this. And, uh, but I think, no, the lesson was, because he, he lists all the stuff that he has. You know, it's just fabulous temple and everything else, which you can see. But you have to say, what was the message here? It was, it has to be for uh, Yahushua. That's going to be his kingdom. That's mm -hmm. going to be his Jerusalem. These are going to be his things where the grandeur is just spectacular. But we know that with David, one of his sons, Ammon, raped his, his uh, sister, Tamar. And so we're looking at the, thing, the rest of the story. And Ammon was then killed by who? Absalom. Absalom. And so there is one of the sons down, Ammon, or Ammon. Now Absalom tries to overthrow David, his father. And so then he dies. That's two sons down. God, it is a sad story. But it also shows that your chil you're not responsible for your children's ways. And they choose, and it's not like David was a bad father. You know, it says, he did all of Yahweh's will except for Uriah. But then that's not it. Then there's Adonijah. So Adonijah attempts to overthrow Solomon and set... So you're looking at the adversary too coming to break this promise of Solomon. Mm -hmm. So Absalom attempted to break the promise. Adonijah attempted to break the promise. And, and, and Adonijah ended up dying. And then Joab, which was, which was the uh, general, you know, who was helping Absalom, or Adonijah, he didn't like Absalom, but Adonijah, to overthrow him, and that would have broken the promise too. So when Yahweh gives a promise, there's a lot of adversity that can come with it, and don't be surprised. Yeah. You know, you fight right through it to bring it to pass. And look at Donald Trump. My goodness, if you want adversity yeah. every day of your life, George Bush was the same way every day of their life. But Yahweh's will is being done in that capacity. And then as we know, Solomon didn't end well, did he? You know, of all the person had everything, and that's in the first Kings 11. So the lesson was there too, that even Solomon, after all this, who Yahweh visited twice, all right, <coughs> you know, rejected Yahweh for who? For women, his, his wives. So are you willing to reject Yahweh for your son, for your daughter? And so we all of our lives, we go through every one of our family members. Are you willing to reject? Yahweh for your husband, for your wife, for your mother, for your father. And that's what it comes down to because that's what, that's what got David, I mean that's what got Adam 
and kicked out of the garden because he took Eve over Yahweh. And this is what Solomon did. He chose his wives at the end. He said in his old age he was deceived. And, and do you think you can be around bad people? No. Do you think you can live with bad people and not be burned? Mm -hmm. And so he had this, and so Solomon uh, didn't end well either. Now, but we go back to, to Christ, so, so that's the real story, and that's our real life, that things are going to be adversity. So we go to Psalms 2, and let's look at a little bit about Christ. Page two, uh, 529. And so in Luke 14, it says, Unless you hate your father and your mother, your wife, your brother, and your sisters, for my sake, you cannot be my disciples. And so what it all comes down to is there's going to be one, and he's not going to be shared. And that was the problem with, you know, with uh, Israel. I just heard a deal on, is it, you know, either Yahweh's God, worship him, or Baal's God, worship him. Choose. And they won. So they had both. So I think I can do both, and that's what Solomon is doing. He's going to the temple with Yahweh while he's building a temple for Moloch, mm -hmm. for his wives. Mm -hmm. And so people, and today the Democratic Party has government as a god who takes care of their needs, and then they go to church on Sundays, a lot of Christians. But, and so we get choose ye this day. And so at Psalms 2, verse 7 through 9, and this is great, let me tell of a decree Yahweh has said unto me, My son thou art, just like he did with Solomon. I today have begotten thee. Ask of me and let me give nations as thy inheritance, and as thy possessions the end of the earth. Thou shalt shepherd them and hug them real tight. No. No, what's it say? <laughs> Iron. <laughs> I love, no, I love that. As a potter vessel, thou shalt hug them. No. no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. the God we have today and the world we live in today, it's all hugs and kisses. Yeah. You know, it really comes down to is just love, just love, 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 love. They will know it. We are Christians by our love, and, and, and love is important, but love it can be killing somebody. Very simply. Uh, now we're going to look at. Uh, King Yahushua uh, building the temple. And that's Zechariah 6. And the temple is paramount to David's ministry, to Solomon's ministry, and it's also to be Christ. And page 905. So you got Malachi's the last book of the Old Testament, and then you got Zechariah. Zechariah what? Chapter 6. Did you mean Zechariah and Malachi? Well, I said Malachi is the last book of the Testament, go one before it is Zechariah. So it's easier to go that way. So Zechariah is before Malachi? Yes. Well, if I said that, but they no, don't know what Malachi is. I'm being silly, yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. Then you have to say, okay, Malachi is the last book. But actually, good question, what's the real last book of the Old Testament? Nope, nobody knows. You guys know? Revelation? No, the Old Testament. The, Old Testament. And the oh. Hebrew, actually the way Yahweh set it up. And this is for people to learn. Uh, what? Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. Pardon me? John. No, the, the Old, Old Testament. Testament. Malachi. No, it's Second Chronicles. Oh, Chronicles oh, okay. ends. Yes, yes, yes. Chronicles yes. ends the Old Testament. And and it's the line of David, the kings. And right at the end of Chronicles, it says, Cyrus comes up and says, "We're going to build a temple, right?" Yeah. That's the end of the book. And that's Christ comes in. And that's Matthew, the next book that comes in. The king. The king. And so it's Second Chronicles, and then it's... But yeah, people messed it up with the Septuagint. The Septuagint, there was 24 books. Septuagint made 36 books, and they made Malachi the end. But that's not the subject. But good at drilling in our head. That's not the last book. Uh, chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. And then shalt thou speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Lo, a man, but is his name. And this is Simak. Simak. And out of his own place shall he bud forth, and shall build the temple of what? Yahweh. Yahweh. This is Ezekiel 40. 
and he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the honor, and he shall sit and rule upon his throne, and shall become a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace shall be between the two of them. So here he's a priest building the temple, and in Psalms 2 he's the king with a scepter sitting on a throne knocking heads. So on a new earth, a thousand year reign where he reigns, is it going to be nice and peaceful all the time? No. No, because he's got mortal men there. And he's going to, he has an iron scepter, and he's going to have to knock some heads around him. And, and you know, none of us are taught any of this. The, the word is full of it because everybody else is in heaven. We just, yeah. there is no new earth that doesn't even exist. And, we, and not even the end of the book, you know, you got, that's revelation in the New Testament. But it's mm -hmm. strange how people just, just jump into heaven, everything's fine, everything's complete. No, it's not. People haven't even been judged yet. Now we go to Isaiah 11, and we're back to Christ. Uh, chapter, I mean, or page 658. And this is the great prophecy of Christ. And you see, we get a reflection on, on uh, uh, Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, remember, he was going to cut a child in half. Yeah, I mean, there's Father, and he, he puts his stories in. 11, chapter uh, 1. I mean, chapter 11, verse 1, sorry, through 4. And there shall come forth a shoot from the root or stalk of Jesse, and a sprout from his root shall, he fr shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and reverence of Yahweh, so he will find fragrance in the reverence of Yahweh. And not by the sight of his eyes will he judge, nor by the hearing of his ears will he decide, for he will judge with righteousness them who are poor, and decide with equity for the oppressed of the Lamb. And he will smite the Lamb with the scepter of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips will he slay the lawless one. So here he becomes kings again. So uh, the temple... Let's go right back to here. And first uh, Chronicles chapter 28. And this is very important because one thing back to the temple again, because Yahushua is going to build a temple. But something for the kids' sakes, 28, verse 2 and 3, we're going to see some interesting facts. 2 and 3. And then David the king rose up on his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, it was near my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of Yahweh and for the footstool of our Elohim, and I made ready to build it. But Elohim said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, for a man of war thou art, and blood that thou hast shed. Now we go to 6 and 7. And he said unto me, Solomon, my son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have made choice of him that he may be my son, and that I may be his father. You know, it, 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 all that has to go to Christ, because Solomon didn't end well. And he might not even be on the new earth. It comes down to it. He might have rejected Yahweh totally. So will I establish his kingdom unto times age of by, and if he be strong, to do my commandments, my regulation as his day. Now we go to 10 to 12. See now that Yahweh hath made choice of thee to build a house for a sanctuary, be strong, and do. Then gave David unto Solomon his son the plan of the porch, and the recesses thereof, and the treasures thereof, and the upper room thereof, and the inner courts thereof, and the recess for the propitiatory, and the plans of which had come by what? The Spirit. The Spirit to be with him for the courts of the house of Yahweh, and for all the rooms round about, for the treasures of the house of Elohim, and for the treasury of hollow thing. <coughs> so who designed the house? David. David. Yeah, Yahweh oh, yeah. through Yahweh. David. But what, a, what an instrument. David was so blessed to have the blueprints out. Yeah. And you're drawing these same things. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see he's acquiring all these things that... Uh, you know, this, this, doing the stone preparation, grabbing yeah. gold, everything else. Now, 19 it kind of finishes up. The whole in writing from the hand of Yahweh upon me to give understanding. So it came from the hand of Yahweh to David, and then Solomon's going to do it. 
And I think we'll stop right there. Okay. Well, Father, we thank you for these words and I have a prophecy for the people. So we thank you for holy Ruach and through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be still and walk in the fullness of my love and my compassion that I put upon you that I have in the past and I will do in the present. As you walk faithfully upon my words and you give yourself to my duties and perform all of my will as David did and you shall be rewarded greatly because you are my sons and daughters in whom I have put here to shed forth my word, my righteousness, my light, so be a lantern to the world so they can see that I abide within you, that I can deliver their life as I delivered yours. Amen. Thank you, Father. See you later.